fear. Have you ever experienced situations in life which are unexplainable? Perhaps moments of uneasiness when you sense an unseen presence watching over you. You've heard mysterious sounds or haunting low murmurs that made the hair on your neck stand straight up. Or maybe you've seen things that made your blood run cold, alarming sights that are unfathomable. I'm your host, Jason Christensen, and this is Mystery TV. Today, we'll be exploring the supernatural phenomena from voices beyond the grave. There will be no reenactments of unsolved crimes on this show, but rather a first-hand look and discussion into the paranormal at the Vernon Town Theater. First built in 1912 as a national dance hall, and then in 1938, at a cost of $60,000, it was renamed to the Capitol Theater. This landmark was making its mark across the country and became the highest rated movie theater in Western Canada, featuring Valley of the Giants as its first Technicolor feature film. This historic national hotspot has its share of secrets, including hidden rooms and a maze of basement tunnels. Over the years, the Vernon Town Theater has changed staff, ownership, and even names. What hasn't changed? Its location on 30th Avenue, nor its haunting residence. If the walls could speak, we'd know the truth of the supernatural beings that decided to make this their long-term home. Some of these untimely deaths include a past projectionist who hung himself leading up to the projection room, and once a dangerous place with heavy spinning reels, a spirit of a little girl remains there as well. In an upstairs office, dwells a man in a three-piece suit, and a young woman resides in a theater room, attempting to watch a movie she will never see the end of. To bring you closer to the real story, we are gonna take you directly to the Vernon Town Theater to explore what's in these historic walls. She has had her own past experiences with the paranormal, and for the first time ever, she enters this haunted historic landmark with our crews as our off-site investigator. Let me introduce to you, Jesse Rivest, Let's have a closer look. There was a girl who died during a movie. Do you think it's a coincidence? I feel like a lightness. Hey guys, I'm Jessie here with Mystery TV. The cleaning staff told us that it's obviously their job to make sure that all of these seats are folded up at the end of every night. But every once in a while, there's ones that are seated down beside each other. So it's almost as if someone's in here hanging out together. <laughs> but there was a girl who died during a movie in this theater. I think it was right back over here where she was sitting. Do you think it's a coincidence that there's a big hole in the wall right in this back corner where she died? Oh my gosh. Who knows what else is under here? We're gonna head upstairs uh, where we'll see the projection room. Oh wow. Ooh. And this is where everyone apparently sees Floyd, our resident ghost. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is the spike where he hung his noose to hang himself. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's just so unsettling to think that this is where someone was 
hanging their body right on top of this staircase. Supposedly the past owners tried to remove it and they were unable to do so. Ooh, yeah, I just got shivers. I mean, a, a poster over top is the next best thing. There's definitely, whenever I walk like through here, I feel like a lightness like around my airways. <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's so wild to think what would have happened here before <laughs> with all of these really huge machines. It's really hot in here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, it's so hot in that room and then you come in here and you get like a chill <laughs> up your spine. Yeah, it looks like maybe someone tried to cover something up here. And then there's like this brick behind there again. It's like every room has multiple layers of history we just kind of have to guess what the heck was going on here whoa all right we're gonna head downstairs to the basement now these are so unusually steep what is that I have to watch my head and my feet at the same time down here. with this pillar it looks like someone whoa it almost looks like the outline of a grim reaper of some kind it's just dark it's just painted over but the grooves of the wood look very precarious we're heading into these tunnels here Is this a scythe? What? Why is this down here? Oh my gosh. These are used for wheat, but why is it down here with all of this film stuff? in the pipes.
This is where someone felt a hand on the back of their neck. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh, just felt like pressure on my back for a second. Or just like a bubble of like air up my shirt. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was really weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe we should get out of the basement now. I'm good. Are you guys good? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we now have Jessie with us in studio to recount her experiences at the Vernon Town Theater. Jessie, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Jessie, that does sound like quite the experience. Did you have any initial expectations of this due to the rich history, the architecture, the age prior to this investigation? Going into it, I knew that, first of all, Vernon had this history of a lot of witch groups and intense Christian groups, and that there had been scribes on the walls from this time period in the theater, mm. as well as the multiple deaths that we discovered while we were there. Deaths? Deaths that had happened in the history, and that there were spirits still hanging around. Uh, so we'll get I into expected, that. Yeah, I expected some vibes for sure. Oh, no doubt. I bet you there were tons of vibes. What we'll do is we'll walk through the journey with you place by place. You started in the uh, Grand Theater, Grand Theater. When you walked in there, you made a comment that uh, it's not unusual to see some of the seats displaced. Yes, the manager had told us that the cleaning staff would flip up the seats as part of their routine at the end of each night, mm -hmm. but that every once in a while, a couple of them would be seated down together. As Always two beside? I don't know if it was always two beside, but sometimes they were just down. And they're not particularly old, so I don't think they would just fall down by themselves. But yeah. And then of course there was the girl who died in the middle of a movie from way back when, and that said to be that she's still waiting for it to be over. Oh, well, you know, I hope someday that she will be able to see the end of that movie. So you're in the theater there now. This was an interesting one. Tell me about the upstairs projection room. Upstairs was definitely, the well, one of the freakiest moments for me, mm -hmm. seeing the spike that the past projectionist had committed suicide on. Uh, it was bent against the wall, and just picturing him there was just really unsettling. A bent spike. Mm -hmm. Why is the spike still in place if it's a little macabre? <laughs> Supposedly the past owners had tried to take it out, but it wouldn't come out. Mm. So this projection room itself, what was the energy like? Was there a strange vibe of maybe somebody hanging around for a little longer than they should be mm -hmm. in that room? Yeah, absolutely. The little office that's right behind the spike. Yeah. We heard these noises in there, and it wasn't just like old heat pipes. Mm. I mean, you, if you were to hear it by itself, maybe you would think that, mm -hmm. but to be in its presence with no sound and then all of a sudden hearing these sounds, it yes. was just ever present. It so was there was very... an energy in that room. Mm -hmm. It was exactly, it was an energy, like unmistakably. There was mention of a, a mural. Tell me about this mural. 
Yeah, the mural was interesting. It had silhouettes of children playing on it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it kind of like something you'd see at a daycare. Okay. Um, but we just couldn't figure out why it was there. I mean, obviously this space has had multiple uses over its history. And like in the basement too. Ooh. When we went down there, there had been these tunnels, almost like pathways that go, they, span, they used to span the whole block. And then they were blocked off. Interesting. For safety so you, reasons. <laughs> so you're walking around down in this basement and you're seeing all these boarded up things. What was the vibe of the basement? Tell me anything interesting about the basement there. I noticed there was uh, one particular thing that you could talk about here. I know. I mean, basements in general are just creepy. Mm -hmm. I can't even go into my own crawl space without being freaked out. But yes, in this particular basement, there was a scythe which you definitely don't see every day. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone who has come across it has been too scared to move it. Mm -hmm. So it's just stayed there. Mm -hmm. That was so weird. We just couldn't figure out why it was there. It was Oh, it, I noticed that. Coincidence? I don't know. As it was mentioned, there's murals, there's drawings on these walls. And there was a drawing on one of those beams down there. It looked perhaps like a, a reaper? Yeah, it, it looked like a reaper. It wasn't an actual painting, but it was just black paint on mm. this beam. And then the grooves of it had this figure. So when we said, oh, it looks kind of like a reaper, and then two seconds later saw the, the scythe on the other side of the wall, it was just, <laughs> that was a bit much. That was a bit weird. <laughs> it is weird. I wouldn't be touching that scythe either myself. There's no doubt about that. No. We're coming up here. You, I have to touch on this. Had, you mentioned you didn't like crawling into spaces and whatnot, but you did. And you felt an energy, a presence, maybe even a temperature change on your back there. Yeah, when I was in the little hallway, I felt a gust of hot air as if someone was blowing up a balloon like, <laughs> up on my lower back. Yikes. So that was when I just ran right out of there. <laughs> well, that would make anybody run out of there, that's for sure. <laughs> Lastly here, why would you think that spirits would stay behind in a place like this. Do you have any insight on that? I'm not an expert on spirit by any means, but from what I can guess, it's that maybe there's unfinished business in that realm, like a sense of purgatory, or ah. that a place where people can slip in and out, uh, where they don't exactly have rest, but they're not angry or sad, just not quite done. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm hoping these spirits get to finish their business sometime soon. Justine, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to the next investigation. It's been Likewise. a absolute pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you to Jesse and to our crew for exploring Vernon Town Theater with us. This has been an enlightening experience for myself and for our viewers. This concludes our episode. Join us next time as we explore the unexplainable. And whether you believe it or not, open up your mind to Mystery TV.